Hi guys, so this is just a quick lesson in the metric system. We're going to be converting between units um, of the same metric system and then converting between English and metrics. So um, hopefully this tutorial will help you figure out how to do these things. The first thing you want to understand is the metric system uses three basic units. Meter is used to, just, um, to measure length. Liter is for liquid volume, like a two liter um, bottle of soda and gram is for mass. Um, <clears throat> so these are your basic bases. So one meter, one liter, one gram has a certain unit to it. Oops, sorry about that. And if you were to want to describe how many liters or how many grams, um, then you add a prefix and these prefixes all have a value to them okay so let's begin with the word base this is going to be our one meter our one liter or one gram okay depending on what we're measuring then every single um, word here kilo hecta and deca these are going to have a meaning of how many grams or how many meters how many bases right so deca means 10 so if you had a decameter right this is how you abbreviate it a decameter that's going to be 10 meters if you have a hectometer then you have a hundred meters if you have a kilometer or people just say kilometer then that's a thousand meters okay so every time you go up it's one decimal point towards the left or you can think about it as a 10 times difference right so you are moving that decimal point so it's 10 times 100 times a thousand times that decimal point just moves one unit towards the right i'm sorry towards the left if you want to go smaller right a decimeter decimeter is going to be 10 one tenth of a meter right so one tenth or 0.1 of a meter so if you divide a meter into 10 that's a decimeter if you want to do centimeter right a centimeter that's a hundred times smaller than a meter so if you took a meter stick and you broke it into a hundred right each one of those units would be a centimeter a millimeter is a thousand times one one thousandth of a meter right a millimeter is if you took a meter stick you broke it into a thousand equal units and one of those units is a millimeter now I want to make um, a little make sure that the word micrometer is actually not um, another zero but that there's a three decimal point jump that a micrometer is a thousand times smaller than a millimeter okay and micrometer the um, abbreviation is a mu this is pronounced mu and it is like a curly u um, but micrometer is how you pronounce it and um, it's 10 to the negative sixth okay it's actually six decimal points smaller than a meter or a liter or a gram okay so micrometer or micrograms very very small amount all right so what we're going to do is look at how to convert between these units so let's say that we have 16 kilometers okay and we just want to know how many centimeters that is okay so we're starting here at 16 kilometers and we want to get to centimeters so how many decimal points are we going to move and in what direction so to go from kilometer to hectometer is one decimal point to move to the next unit is another decimal point so that's two decimal points to get to base is another decimal point one two three four five okay so we had to move five decimal points toward our right so simply where is our decimal point in the number 16 it's right here right it's a whole number so we're just going to move one two three four five put our new decimal point in and fill in all those spots with zeros and you have your answer so 16 kilometers is one six with one two three four five zeros one million six hundred thousand centimeters all right so it's a lot easier to say 16 kilometers than one million six hundred thousand centimeters but that's how you do that so you just want to count how many bases 
you are um, moving the decimal point and in which direction, and then you can easily do that. So it's kind of a cheat into how to doing this. Um, you can memorize the order, kilometer, hectometer, decameter, base, cent, deci, centi, milli, micro, by this, right? Kings hate dragons because this is our base. Dragons can't make money. All right. Let's try one more. Let's say we have um, a milligram. Sometimes medicine comes in milligrams, right? 200 milligrams, I think, is how much ibuprofen is in one ibuprofen pill. And how many grams is that? Okay. So we want to go from milli to our base, right? So we are going to do one, two, three decimal points over to the left. Where is our decimal point is 200. It's right behind here. It's a whole number. So three over to the left. One, two, three. We always want to put a zero in front of our decimal point so that people know there's a decimal point there. Okay, so it's basically 0.2 grams, right? 200 milligrams is 0.2 grams. The reason why I really like for you guys to put a zero in front of the decimal point is because if you're going into any kind of job where you have to take numbers down as um, you know rec recordings, and sometimes if you're working fast, you might point, do point two, da, 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 and somebody else might read this and not see the decimal point, right? That, that little dot could be interpreted as a mistake or a smear or just, you know, a random dot. So they might read this as two grams of something, which is uh, 10 times more than 0.2 grams, okay? That... 10 times difference can kill someone, right? If you have 10 times more medicine or 10 times less medicine, uh, it can really do some harm. So you always wanna put a zero in front of your decimal point just to make sure, hey, there is a decimal point there and this zero tells you to look out for that because no one writes, if they're gonna write two grams, no one points, writes, oh, two grams, right? The decimal point goes there. All right, let's work another one. Let's go from milli to micro. So um, how about 9.3 um, milliliters equals how many microliters, okay? So remember that this is a not a one decimal point, but it's three decimal points over to the right. So here's our decimal point, 9.3. We're just going to go one, two, three. Fill in your empty spots, 9300, right, 9,300 microliters, all right? So the trick is to know the order of your bases, and then it's very simple from there on out. You just move left or right according to the number of decimal points that you need to move. All right, so let's convert between English and metric. Now, when you are converting between two different kinds of units, we can't just simply move the decimal point. We have to have the conversion, right? We need to know <clears throat> what's equal to each other in order to start changing the units. So let's start with an example of how many miles are in a 5K race. So we need to look at our choices here and we need to figure out, well, what makes sense to use, right? So how many miles in a 5K? It looks like, oh, and by the way, if you didn't know 5K, K stands for kilometers, five kilometers. So it looks like this one is what we want to use, right? It should be equal here. <clears throat> so anytime you have something that are equal to each other, they can be on either side of a, a fraction, one mile over 1.61 kilometers, or you can put 1.61 kilometers over one mile. It doesn't matter, they're, they're the same. This unit one mile is the same as 1.61, so it doesn't matter what side of the fraction they go on. You decide by looking at your problem. So whenever you have a problem of conversion, you're gonna have two fractions, okay? And you're going to look at what unit you wanna end up with. The question says, how many miles? So I know that I'm looking for miles. So I want my miles 
to stay. I want my kilometers to cross out. So I know my kilometers are going to be on opposite sides of the equation. Okay, so I'm going to end up with miles. I want my miles here. I have a five kilometer race and I want my, so basically uh, the miles, I'm going to choose this one because my miles on top, I can have my kilometers cross out because they're on opposite sides of the equation. If I use this, that wouldn't work because that means the kilometers would not cross out. The kilometers would be on the same side of the equate the fractions, and I don't want that. I want them to be on opposite sides of the fraction. So my kilometers, when you multiply fractions, your kilometers units will cross out because they're on opposite sides, and you'll be left with miles, which is what we want. Okay. So now look at look at our numbers. We have five. Um, times 1 over 1.61. So that's di division. So 5 is going to be divided by 1.61. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on my calculator here. Okay, so 5 divided by 1.61 is 3.1. 3.1 miles, because I have miles left. They didn't cancel out. Okay, so let's walk through a few more. Kevin Hart is 5 foot five feet four inches how many centimeters is that and how many meters is that so let's take a look at our um, our conversion um, our choices here what would work for us I think that this would work for us right one inch equals 2.54 centimeters but we need to figure out we have five feet four inches so what do we want to do let's make everything inches right so we know that one foot is 12 inches. So Kevin Hart is five feet times 12 inches, right? So that's gonna be 60 inches plus another four inches. So Kevin Hart is 64 inches tall. Now, how many centimeters is that? So Kevin Hart, 64 inches over one. When we set up our second equation, where do we want, so here it is, right, inches and centimeters. We want our centimeters to be left. We want our inches to cross out. So we're going to put our inches on the bottom of the equation, one, okay, and then we're going to put our centimeter unit on top. And then since our numbers now are on the top of both of our fractions, we multiply. So 64 times 2.54 is 162.56 centimeters, okay, because our inches crossed out. Now, that answers our first question. How many centimeters? It's 162.56 centimeters. How many meters is that? So then we just go back to what we've been doing here, okay? So actually, let me get that number again, 162.56. 162.56 centimeters. So we're at centimeters and we want to just get to base. We want to know how many meters. One, two. Okay, two decimal points over to the left. One, two. 1.6256 meters. That's how tall Kevin Hart is. Okay, 1.6256. <laughs> 1.6256. One point six two five six meters. Okay, let's move on to another example. A recipe that's written in France calls for 250 milliliters of milk. How many pints is this? So let's look at our choices. What would make sense? Pints, milliliters, here's a pint, right? We can use this. The problem is our, our, our real world problem is in milliliters and our conversion has liters. So we need to make milliliters into liters. So how many liters is this? Okay, so we wanna just convert. So if you go back to your base units, a milliliter is a thousand times smaller than a liter. So three decimal points. So our decimal point 250 is right here. So one, two, three. Let's put a zero there, 0 0.25 liters. 
Now we're ready to go. Now we can use this, okay? So we have 0 0.25 liters over one, okay? So now let's look at our equation here and we say that we want our pints on top because that's what the problem asks for and we want our liters to cross out on opposite sides. So our liter 0 0.471 liters to one pint. Okay, so that way when we do the math, our liters cross out. Our numbers are on opposite sides of the fraction, so we're going to divide. We're going to do 0.25 divided by 0.471. And this is going to give us 0 0.53 pints. Okay, so a little bit more than half a pint is what you're going to need, um, and that's what 250 milliliters looks like. All right, let's do another one. A small swimming pool is 8,600 gallons. How many liters is this? All right, so what's something we can use over here? One gallon equals 3.79 liters. So, 8,600 gallons over one. What's our next fraction? How are we going to set this up? We want our gallons on opposite sides. So our gallons cross out and the gallons is one. We want our liters on top, 3.79. And now since both of our numbers are on top of the fraction, what are we going to do? Multiply. So 8600 zero, zero, times 3.79 equals 32,594 liters. It's a lot of liters for a swimming pool. Okay, that's our answer. Remember our gallons crossed out. All right, a person weighs 149 pounds. How many kilograms is this? Okay, let's start with, what are we gonna use? I like this one, pounds to grams. It does ask for kilograms, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of a, an extra conversion step at the end, but let's just go ahead and see how many grams of 149 pounds is, right? So 149 pounds over one. How are we gonna set up our fraction? Pounds is gonna be on the opposite side. All right, so one pound for 454 grams. And our numbers are on the same side, so we're gonna multiply. 149 times 454 is 67,646 grams. Okay, that's a lot of grams. How many kilograms is that? I know that a kilogram is a thousand times larger than a gram, so I know I'm gonna have to move my decimal point three in towards the left. 67 comma 646 there's my decimal point at the end, right? So three, one, two, three, put my new decimal point there. So it's 67.646 kilograms. All right, so if you are around 149 pounds, you are around 67 and a half kilograms. All right, our last Example, a rugby ball weighs 454 grams. How many ounces is this? One ounce, let's use this one. One ounce equals to 28.35 grams. So we have our rugby ball, 454 grams. How are we gonna set up this guy? We want our grams to cross out. They're gonna be on opposite sides. We have our ounces on top, one ounce to 28 five grams. The grams cross out. Our numbers are on opposite sides of the fraction, so we're going to multi. Uh, sorry, we're going to divide. Four five four divided by twenty eight point three five equals sixteen point oh. Let's just leave it. Oh, it's oh one four one ounces. Okay, so a rugby ball is sixteen ounces. Awesome, so that's it. So if you have any more questions, please let me know, but this is a, a quick tutorial on how to do 
these different math problems.